Now you might remember a video not so long ago where I set colors in the Linux console. And to do this, you needed to put the colors in the PS1 prompt. That's the, uh, like the bash prompt that is, sits in your shell, is loaded up by your bash RC or whatever is being loaded up into your uh, Linux console or your shell or in your terminal and all this kind of stuff. Um, and it got me thinking because people started saying to me, oh, I use this PS1 prompt. So PS1 prompt we'll look at in a minute is the primary prompt on your bash shell. And people said, oh, I have the date in my PS1 or I have all these settings in the PS1. So today I wanted to have a little look at the PS1, the bash prompt customization, and we'll look at how you can sort of build your own, not just um, have a copy paste type PS1 prompt, how you can do it. So we're just gonna get into this pretty much. And so let's look at the screen. And this is just the Arch Wiki, of course, on bash prompt customization. Um, great resource, covers a lot, and it's got some great links as well. And we'll just quickly explain what then the PS1 prompt is. So if you look here, we've got is the primary prompt which is displayed before each command, thus it is the most people customized. Now you can read all this stuff. So PS0 is displayed after each command. PS2 is a secondary prompt displayed when command needs more input, e.g. multi-line command, you've got PS3, PS4. You can read up all of that. We are only focusing pretty much on the PS1 command. Okay, and again, you can go through all the Arch Wiki and look through all this kind of stuff. Lots of good stuff here, um, but, but we are actually going to break this down a little bit further. We're gonna to go to specific elements and we're gonna make our own little prompt. Good or bad, it's not the point. You make what works for you, but this is how we are going to um, look at the core parts of doing this if this makes sense. Okay, so I don't want that one. So uh, I've got this link from the Arch Wiki and it is from the GNU, of course, who make the Bash shell or maintain the Bash shell, etc. And so they've got some nice little information on controlling the prompt, as they call it. And we're gonna start editing this. So if you look here, I am in my uh, Linux virtual machine. I'll prove it to you. As you can see, there is no prompt. There is no prompt at all. Well, there is, but why did, why did I did that in the last video? Which term? No, no, echo term, echo term. I think it's because I've been using which and where is lately. I just, I don't know. Anyways, you can see I'm in the Linux console, okay? So not that that truly matters, but we're just gonna do everything in the Linux console where possible. As you know, I prefer it, okay. So as you can see, there's no prompt, but I can do all this kind of stuff. I can do PWD. So um, in a way I can do whatever I need without a prompt. So it's up to you if you literally even want a prompt. So let's just go into our bash RC where your prompt will probably, the one that's being displayed lives. There are other ways to have the prompt, but we're just gonna deal with the bash RC. If you're using a different shell, obviously look up your documentation, whether it's um, ZSH and or whatever you're using. Okay, so if you look, uh, I've got these two commented out. So this um, PS1 here, this prompt, is the default one that comes with uh, my Arch install. And we'll look at some of these um, characters in a minute, what they do. And then this is the one um, that I had, was related to the one I had in my video about setting shell colors. This is an octal, which is a color, a white. So replacing the gray and uh, it then has um, the PS1 after. So basically setting every color after whatever. So it's setting the PS1 as the color, it doesn't. Okay, I'm not gonna try and explain this, just uh, work it out for yourself. But the point is, if I use the alias um, grep with the color, it, it resets the colors in the terminal. You can look at the video and work out what happened. Let's not get into that because we we are going oh, out of scope as the saying goes. 
Okay, so my actual PS1 set now is to is nothing, literally empty, okay? So you see these two quotations after the equals. So if I right quit, as you can see, it is empty and I can source the bash RC to prove to you. Nothing there, I can still run commands, I can still get all the information. Now, if that's the true minimalism you want, that might be an option. However, let's start building this up. So how about, how, ooh, maybe I should move this up. Maybe just, I don't know, for ease. I don't know. Anyway, so if I put a space here, and I do source.bashrc, as you can see, I now have it slightly indented or uh, one space, okay? You might like that, you might not. But let's now look then at the um, gnu.org's instructions uh, about controlling the prompt. So you've got, what have we got here? Bell character, not really interested in that. Now you can put the date in. So let's have a look at putting the date in. So I'm gonna go back into the bash RC and let's put uh, an escape D and a space K and then if I do source dot bash RC as you can see now my prompt is just a date okay nothing else just a date and it's a default date so as you can see that's the format now you can use a uh, let's make this a bit bigger you can use a large D with these squiggly brackets and you can have the format that you require we're not going to do that you can put an escape, an escape character. You can put in your host name. So this is kind of such as, um, as you can see in this PS1 prompt here, that's the default, that's the host name. So I could put the host name. And I could do it like an at. There you go, so you can put in normal normal characters, let's say. If I do source dot bash rc, as you can see, that's the date at my uh, host name or my yes my host name that is my host name I can check that I think host name is a command isn't it yeah no whatever host I can't remember the command anyway that's my host name deal with it and then um, you've got a I guess that's a larger host name so if I go into dot bash rc and uh, I do capital H, okay, and then I do source dot bash rc. Doesn't seem to make any difference. That's fine. Okay, so you can also have the number of jobs managed by the shell. Let's try that. So let's just let's just keep adding here. Uh, host names J. Oh, of course I've got JJ maps. So I just need to let this do its thing. Okay, let's source this. So I have zero, as you can see, I've got zero at the end there of zero. Okay. Um, and then the base name, of the sh uh, base name of the shell's terminal device name. Okay. As you can see, this is not necessarily the most useful, but we're going to go with it. We are going to go with it. It's going to keep building it. There you go. I'm in TTY1. You might want to know which you're in. So if you're in PTS, is in a virtual terminal on, I don't know, i3 or something in next term. So um, you can have a carriage return, a new line. Let's put in a new line. Let's start below. I presume that will do it. Okay, new line, let's source. So there you go, I'm now below. That's quite nice, isn't it? So you could be just below the line if you want to. Okay, what else have we got? So we can have different formats for time. Um, see what we've got now. So we've got D for date, let's change it to T. Ooh. Learn to use Vim properly so now there you go I've got that format for time and then you can have the time in uh, that format if you want um, 
in that format the username so let's put in our username as you see that's in the default of course as well so I could have again I could have a username uh, at the host name which is kind of that format there source this so there you go YouTube James at YouTube test okay you could even have the version of bash just to flex how how amazing you are so uh, let's see what is it it's a cap or uh, lowercase v so just to flex let's put in backslash v there you go 15.2 is that literally the latest I don't know and you're going to put the value of the PWD so uh, base name PWD so as you can see um, let's go back into it on the default it's got backslash W so tells you where your working directory is so we can do that let's just let's just put it all in is this like the ultimate prompt not really because as I will show you there are a lot of ways you can have a prompt and it's got the tilde character to show you in your home directory interest it's followed down the line probably because I, I put it after the new line character but hey you might want that and you've got the bash history number effective UUID so again you can do so much you can begin a sequence of non-printing characters this could be used to embed a terminal control sequence into the prompt which I think it does um, if I look here yeah, so as you can see, if I highlight this, you can see the the brackets here. Okay, so what else could we do? So let's let's wrap this in some nice uh, red color. Okay, so how about we do? Um, let's see. Let's do uh, backslash zero. So this is an octal. An octal. And I think it's free one for red. I'm not going to do white. Okay, and then let's put that there and let's close out. Let's close out uh, our red here. So, um, how do I close it out? So, warm color. Zero M. Okay, so zero free free bracket. So this is from my own. I use I use red as a warning for certain things in my shell. So I'm just basically applying it here. I hope this will work. Let's see. Hopefully I won't brick it. So there you go. You got your, your prompt in red, and you can have whatever color you want. I think if you go into again, you've got all the colors here. This is this is all at the bottom of the bash shell prompt. Uh, here you go. So there's all the links. Um, you got T put, so you can do colors there with T put. But there you go. Bash tips, colors, and formatting. So I'll put these all in the description. So you can go in there, you've got crazy powerful bash prompts, so you could literally copy, copy this here and have that prompt or this prompt or these prompts. You can explore all that, there's little screenshots here. If this interests you, maybe you're a, um, I don't know, maybe you're a system um, administrator and you, you need all this information on your prompt I don't know I will put the link in the description um, there's some more stuff there there's even a program written in shell I believe written in shell where a full feature and carefully designed adaptive prompt for bash and ZSH so again you can look into all this and this will design your prompt for you I presume more information on bash prompts here and then what we were looking at so if you want fine grain control so to speak look at the instructions follow or get the I've just gone through a few things here just to adapt a prompt you can do as you will uh, maybe put in the comments what you've done or what you do and if you want of course some already made ones there's some already made ones that you can play around with 
I'm not, as you know, I'm minimal by nature. I don't necessarily need all this information. I do find it a bit of a distraction sometimes. So for me, it's a bit like a status bar, but a nicer status bar. It's nice to know where you are. So PWD, uh, which director you're in, that's always nice. But apart from that, I'm not too fussed. So um, as you can imagine, in the next video, this will not be my prompt, but I hope I've given you a heads up on how you can customize um, so I really think that's it. I mean, this is going to be this. This is like a, a complete um, deep. You know, if you're getting into this, this is a you know going down the rabbit hole. Really, maybe we will in future videos, but this video will go on forever. So I've just given you, I've given you the water you need to drink from it. I've found the well. Go and get the water. Okay, is that a good analogy? Probably not. So yeah, I just feel this is a, a whole. A whole um, down the rabbit hole type thing, but now you know how to get some of the core parts to it anyway. So um, we shall, I think, leave that there then. And um, you know what to do you can do the fake YouTube where you like, you comment, and you subscribe. And obviously, I want to give thanks to Sean and HTX80 Nerd, my membership now if you want to be part of the membership and have your name on the screen as you should be seeing now and have some perks like early access videos then look in the description and there's information about that and how great would it be to add your name onto onto the membership screen at the end fantastic so uh, we will leave it there and uh, I will see you in the next one